again for another comedy episode of On This Brooks Transcribed. By his own admission, Principal Osgood Conklin's astute leadership has molded Madison High into a streamlined machine which operates with the facile precision of a new car. But to our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison, it's the same old jalopy. That's true. Mr. Conklin is the same old flat tire, and Mr. Boynton still needs his battery charge. <laughs> but after Paul's astute leadership, last Tuesday we solemnly and traditionally observed the birthday of Madison's beloved founder and first principal, Rodar Chris. <laughs> The only Madison High principal ever to be awarded a distinguished service plaque by the Board of Education. Of course, Mr. Conklin has long been bucking for a similar honor, but inasmuch as the Board has ignored him for lo these many years, I was not prepared for the news with which my landlady, Mrs. Davis, pelted me at breakfast. Carly, I was just leaving the market a few minutes ago when I saw our good Conklin pulling up in his car. He was grinning from ear to ear. What happened? Did he run over a teacher? <laughs> no, dear. Something wonderful happened to him. He caught pneumonia? <laughs> I'm serious, Tommy. Last night he received a telegram from Mr. Stone, the head of the board, informing him that they decided to award him a plaque for distinguished service to Madison High. You're kidding. No, it's true. And was he proud? Why, when he showed me the telegram, his chest was all puffed up. Fine. Now it'll blend neatly with the rest of his anatomy. <laughs> How come you did your shopping so early this morning, Mrs. Davis? Well, I wanted to pick up some groceries for my sister Angela. A dreadful thing happened to her at the drugstore yesterday, poor thing. Angela's the absent-minded one in the family, you know. What happened to her? Oh, what happened to who, dear? <laughs> you started to tell me what happened at the drugstore to your sister Angela. She's the absent-minded one in your family. <laughs> she certainly is. <laughs> well, I guess that these dishes do that. <laughs> Something dreadful happened at the drugstore. Spring, Connie. In the spring of 48. Now, what happened to Angela? Oh, her. She bumped her head on the pinball machine, and the girl caused amnesia. Amnesia? Couldn't even remember her own name. Well, when the druggist sent for the police, Angela became so hysterical... She called him some awful names, Connie. But realizing she had amnesia, he forgave her for that, of course. Well, that's fine, but anyway, when her mind snapped back to normal, she felt terribly embarrassed. You know what a shy, sensitive, sweet old lady Angela is. Yes, I do. But what caused her mind to snap back to normal? She bumped her head again, getting into the patrol wagon. <laughs> blow on the head often cures amnesia, you know. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> oh, that's probably Walter Denton to drive you to school. I'll go pick up some breakfast for him, dear. All right, Mrs. Davis. Come in, Walter. Greetings, <laughs> all queen of Madison's faculty. <laughs> I bow to the teacher for whom I have not but the highest regard. And I bow to the student for whom I have not but the lowest mark. <laughs> Now, Walter, Mrs. Davis is getting your breakfast. Oh, splendid. Uh, Miss Brooks, I happened to pass Mr. Conklin's house last night. Uh, well, I didn't actually pass it. I dallied there just long enough to let the air out of his tires. <laughs> Same. Yes. How could you? Well, it's easy. You just press the little valve down and... <laughs> call it retribution, Miss Brooks. Yesterday, I accidentally broke a window in Mr. Conklin's office, and it made him so mad he saddled me with a whole week's detention. So I decided to take out its value in trade, sort of. 
detective by playing a series of innocent little pranks on the old boy that are guaranteed to make his life utterly miserable. <laughs> I'm afraid there's nothing you can do to pull Mr. Conklin out of the happy clouds today, Walter. Last night he received a telegram from Mr. Stone informing him that the board has decided to award him a plaque for distinguished service. Oh, Mr. Stone didn't send that telegram? He didn't? Of course not, I did. <laughs> yeah, I consider that little beauty my prize, Frank, Miss Smith. He's setting him up to an awful letdown, comprenez vous? He thinks all day he'll be madly awaiting that silly plaque, and when he doesn't get it, tell Billy Drop. <laughs> gone much too far, Walter. When Mr. Conklin discovers what you've done, it's my guess that you'll be expelled from school. Well, so how are you going to find out? Well, every criminal overlooks one little detail, Walter, and you're no exception. When Mr. Conklin fails to receive the silly plaque, it's only natural he'll investigate. First of all, he'll call the telegraph office and the whole truth will come out. Holy cow! I've created a Frankenstein! In fact, if I should be expelled, what do I say to my pop? But you've got to help me, Miss Brooks. But you wouldn't want to see me get the old heave hole, would you? No, I wouldn't, Walter. But my sympathies are also with poor Mr. Conklin in this matter. When I think of his fondest dream growing up in his silly face, the face, <laughs> it's positively cruel. Hold it a second, Miss Brooks. Hold it. I've got the old dream working. But, so I created a Frankenstein, okay? So now I've created a little scheme which, with your help, will slay the monster in his lair. What's the layout, Louie? <laughs> I went to school this morning. You will drop into Mr. Conklin's office and subtly remind him of the case of the former Madison principal, Mr. Hargrove, who modestly declined the flack from the board. Now, they deemed his gesture so noble that one year later they gave Mr. Hargrove not a little plaque, but a statue of himself, which is now ensconced in our auditorium. In other words, you want me to convince Mr. Conklin that if he should decline the plaque, he'll set himself in line for a statue. Exactly. But rather, he'll never get the statue. Nobody can dream, can he? <laughs> well, don't you realize that if I should stoop to such a deception, I'd be a traitor, not only to Mr. Conklin, but to the school as well? Well, you all cooperate, huh? Okay. Just thought you were a friend, that's all. It's a desperate scheme, sure, but it's a desperate situation. You have your own problems, I guess. What happens to me doesn't really matter. Oh, now, please, no tears. No, I forgive you, Miss Brooks. If you want to let poor Mr. Conklin suffer to the point where my father will beat the daylights out of me, that's probably... <laughs> I'll be expelled. Okay, so what? You just can't help me. Oh, now, please, Walter. After all, you can't be a traitor. Who can't? Dry your eyes and call me Benedict. <laughs> Morning, Harriet. Oh, hi, Walter. So, wasn't that Miss Brooks who just dropped off in post school? Oh, yeah, she was in a hurry to get to your father's office. Oh, yes, you'll certainly find him in a wonderful mood. Daddy got a telegram last night, Walter, and you'll never guess what it said. And what do you bet? <laughs> it was from Mr. Stone. The board has decided to give Daddy a plaque for distinguished service. Yeah, sure. And Walter, look who's coming up. Oh, good morning, Denton. Uh, Mr. Stone. Uh, are you going to see Mr. Conklin, sir? Uh, no time for that now. Just stop by to say hello. And how are you, Harriet? Oh, I'm simply thrilled, Mr. Stone. Last night when Daddy received your telegram... Harriet! A telegram? From me, a telegram? Oh, well, perhaps my secretary sent it off without my knowledge after our meeting yesterday afternoon. It wasn't until five o'clock that we arrived at the decision. The decision, Mr. Stone? Yes. The board has decided to give Mr. Conklin a plaque for distinguished service. Good morning. I'm glad you opened my eyes, Miss Brooks. If Mr. Stone thinks he can brush me off with a silly plaque, he's sadly mistaken. 
A statue. That's what I deserve. Oh, please, Mr. Johnson, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm grateful to you, my dear. What a fool I've been. To think that I've been sitting here in sheer ecstasy, mentally savoring that putrid plaque. I will sign the plaque, of course, modestly and in the letter, as you have suggested. I'll get my personal stationer from my inner office, Miss Brooks. Excuse me one moment. Take your time, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks, I've got to talk to you. What is it, Walter? Oh, cow belly drop again. Everything I said in that phony telegram turned out to be true. What? I just saw Mr. Stone, and he told me the board has decided to give Mr. Conklin a plaque. But I've already talked Mr. Conklin into declining it. But then you've got to reverse course and talk him into accepting it. I'll wait out in the hall for you, Miss Brooks. It's good luck. Good luck. Well, great. Did uh, I hear someone in here, Miss Brooks? You couldn't have. You're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. If you heard the door slamming, it was just the wind. Now, if you look to... Oh, hold on, hold on. You know, I was just thinking. I've given my all to this school. Five years of faithful service. Mr. Hargrove served less than half that time, and for that, he got a statue. Yes, and what an ugly monstrosity it is. It's no wonder the students parked their messy chewing gum all over him. I think you might be happier with a plaque after all, Mr. Conklin. Nonsense, nonsense. I shall write the letter of destination as per your original suggestion, Miss Brooks. In it, I shall request a reply. You will wait for it. For a reply? Signed and sealed by Mr. Stone's death. But, sir, why comfort you? I have spoken. Come <laughs> on, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Bye, Mr. Conklin. Well, Walter, it seems congratulations are in order. Congratulations? What do you mean, Miss Brooks? Remember that Frankenstein you created? He just had a baby. <laughs> well, there I was, Connie Brooks, bride of Frankenstein. Star of Walter Denton's Pulitzer Prize winning scheme entitled, I Gave You the Bag, Miss Brooks, Now Hold It. <laughs> As I was about to leave my classroom at noon and head for Mr. Conklin's office, something entitled, That's What I Want for Christmas, came in. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Brian. Are you busy? No, what's your best offer? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. Can you excuse me? I've got to run over to Mr. Conklin's office. Walter Denton is in trouble up to my neck. Yes, I know. Walter confessed the entire story to me, hoping that I could come up with a solution. But I'm afraid that's not up to me, Miss Brooks. You're carrying the ball. It's not a ball. It's a bomb. <laughs> Let us bounce it over to Mr. Conklin's office together, shall we? I'll be happy to tag along, if you don't mind. Say, I met Mrs. Davis as she was heading to the school cafeteria. I promised to join her for lunch, in fact. Mrs. Davis is in the cafeteria? Well, yes. She said she just didn't feel like dining at home alone. When well, Mr. Conklin lets you go, Miss Brooks, do you think you might join us? I don't know. I may join the Foreign Legion instead. <laughs> I saw Mr. Conklin briefly at 11 o'clock, and he was practically throwing a fit because Mr. Hargrove received a statue from the board. Ingrates, he called them. Particularly Mr. Stone. Really, I've never seen him so furious. Well, that was at 11 o'clock, Miss Brooks. Maybe he's calmed down a little by now. Well, here's his office. I'll soon find out. Come in if you dare. <laughs> yes, he has calmed down a little. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Aha! Before you leave that inkwell, please observe that I have entered under a flag of truth. And let's dispense with the levity, shall we? Miss Brooks, instead of writing to Mr. Stone, I have decided to have a little chat with him. It's clear to me now that in view of my outstanding record, the board would have given me a statue long ago if Mr. Stone had not been working insidiously against me. Oh, you mustn't jump to conclusions, Mr. Conklin. After all, Mr. Stone is your superior, sir, and if you should flare up in his presence... Well, I see your point. Yes, yes, you're perfectly right. Safe control, that's the figure. Osgood Conklin speaking. Hello, Osgood. This is Mr. Stone. And Mr. Stone, eh? <laughs> I've instructed a gentleman in our office to deliver your plaque just as... Oh, pipe down, you ingrate! Conklin. What's that? Osgood, I said this is Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone. <laughs> I have to call you 
you, Mr. Holmes. I bet you let Mr. Hargrove call you Charlie. Rank discrimination. That's what it is. I've had just about enough of you. Goodbye, you... 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 you well, I guess I sold him off, Mr. There's absolutely nothing he can do about it except fire me. If he thinks I'm going to grovel it... Fire me! Child, look what you made me do. Oh, me? Yes, you. I was perfectly content with my little plaque until you came in and steamed me up. Now Mr. Stone will have my job. My little family will starve. Holy Toledo, look out the window. That man coming up the walk with the briefcase. The man Mr. Stone sent over with my plaque. Who wants the plaque on statue? All I want is my job. <laughs> forgive you for that, sir. You know, Mrs. Davis's sister, Angela, she called the druggist some terrible names, and he forgave her. Come to think of it, though, she had amnesia at the time. Amnesia? That's it. I didn't know what I was saying. I wasn't in my right mind. Oh, now, please, Mr. Conklin. It's your only way out. Hello, my name is Turner. Mr. Conklin, I presume. Mr. Conklin, who's Mr. Conklin? <laughs> I, I Run can't... along, boy. I've got amnesia. <laughs> amnesia? Tell him, lady. Yes, sir. Mr. Turner, I'm Miss Brooks. Brooks, Brooks. Who's Brooks? I've been taking care of Mr. Conklin here, sir. The amnesia came on suddenly. An accident. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Who's sorry? <laughs> Folks, will you have lunch with me, Daddy? Daddy? Who's Daddy? <laughs> daddy! Don't call me Daddy. I never saw you before in my life. Daddy! Daddy, who's Daddy? Don't look at me. I'm not Daddy. <laughs> Daddy has received a blow on the head. Yes, he has amnesia, child. Amnesia? Amnesia? Who's amnesia? <laughs> You'll allow me to use the phone, Miss Brooks. I'll inform the authorities. They've already been informed. They're picking Daddy up in an hour. <laughs> oh, no! Carry it later on. I will explain how everything happened. Now, you go have lunch and don't worry. All right, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Daddy. Oh, poor Daddy. You can just leave the plaque here, Mr. Turner. You needn't take it back to the board. I don't know anything about any board. I just came in here to sell a few brushes. <laughs> Get off, you nincompoop. Boy, this guy is wacky, all right. You bet I'll get out. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Conklin. I think I'll toddle off to lunch now. Not so bad. To be perfectly candid with you, Miss Brooks, I wasn't too fond of the amnesia bit. Didn't sound convincing to me. Nor to me. And I'd advise you to get the old brain working on a totally different scheme to clear we, Miss, Mr. Stone. Something clever. Uh, but, sir... Think, think. Dream up some nice, dirty, juicy plot. Remember, I hold you responsible for my present life. So if I'm booted out of this school, I'll take you with me. <laughs> That's the dirtiest, juiciest plot I ever heard. <laughs> he didn't even recognize me. Me, his own daughter. My goodness. You poor kid. Don't cry, Harriet. It was a blow on the head. He just said the authorities are going to pick him up in an hour. They're going to put Daddy away. Oh, it'll not only ruin his life, but mine and Mother's as well. Gosh, if there were anything we could possibly do to restore his memory, you could certainly depend on us, Harriet. But we're powerless. Wait, I'll have it. Why not give Mr. Conklin another blow on the head? <laughs> That's good, my sister Angela's amnesia. Hey, I've read about that in medical books, Harriet. If a person is stricken with amnesia due to a blow on the head, a second blow does sometimes restore his memory. Yeah. 
and you don't have to wait an hour. It's instantaneous. As soon as it gets whacked. <laughs> Particularly effective if the blow is delivered by surprise. Oh, but I wouldn't want anyone to hit, Daddy. It's a blow that may mean the happiness of your entire family, child. Now, you must be brave. Would you like to give it to him with my umbrella, Mr. Bowden? <laughs> it has a mahogany handle. <laughs> Leave me out of it, Mrs. Davis. I'm too strong for the job. Let Walter do it. No, not me. It's impolite for a student to belt one's own principle. <laughs> he doesn't have to be impolite, Walter. When Mr. Conklin opens the door, just say, forgive me, sir, and then they'll <laughs> Please, Harriet. If there's one thing that breaks me up, it's the crying of a female. Yeah, I'm the same way. He just tears the heart out of me. Well, you have the courage to help poor Daddy, neither one of you. Yeah. Well, if you folks will excuse me, I I want to go upstairs and kind of think a little. Guess I'll take a stroll over to the gym and maybe think a little. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Go on. Oh, no. You just can't depend on them. Well, you just dry your tears, Harriet. I'll think of something. Now, let me think. Think, Miss Brooks? I'm trying to, sir. How's this? You go home and I'll wait here in your office. Now, when Mr. Stone arrives, I'll tell him you haven't been in all day and that the person who called him those nasty names on the phone must have been a prankster imitating your voice. What an idea. I wasn't even here. An imposter impersonating me. Splendid, splendid. I'll get out of here, but... Look, the window. Mr. Stone's coming up the walk. Holy cow! If I tried to make a run for it now, he'd see me in the hall. I can't go out the door. Can't go out the window. What do I do? Well, it's a little early for the chimney, Santa. You're trapped. <laughs> My family's at stake. He mustn't see me here. Wait. I've got it. A daring scheme. Oh, no more schemes, please. He won't see me. He can't see me. Not if I render him unconscious with a quick, painless whack on the noggin. What? Flood the head of the boy? The moment he opens that door. Well, you lost all sense of reason, Mr. Conklin. When one hysteria carries him to the point Stand of... Stand back and be quiet. One quick blow and it's all over. Oh, good. What's the meaning of? He knocked him out. Oh, I've got to revive him. Wake up, sir. Wake up. Mr. Conklin, wake up. Stand back, Mr. Stone. Maybe if I slap his face a bit, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin. Why, that maniac was throwing an uppercut at me. I had to defend myself. Mm. Oh, uh, he seems to be regaining consciousness. Oh. Oh, what happened? One quick blow and it was all over. <laughs> On your feet. You've got some tall explaining to do, Osgood. Osgood? Who's Osgood? <laughs> oh, Mr. Stone, oh, Mr. Stone. I was hoping you'd drop in, sir. How oh, I missed you. <laughs> he didn't miss you, Daddy. <laughs> I, uh, I seem to be missing you, too. Osgood. Why did you take a swing at me as I entered this office? Me, sir? You're mistaken, Mr. Stone. May I be struck by liking you? I get the door. I'll get it. I'll get it. Forgive me, sir. <laughs> wake up, Mr. Conklin. Wake up. Please, sir. Benton, are you in the habit of knocking out your principal? No, sir. This is my lucky day. <laughs> You were struck by 16-year-old lightning. <laughs> then I seem to be missing him. Another blow, another two. That's life, Mr. Conklin. What in the world is going on here? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, forgive me, Osgood. <laughs> Hug in the handle. <laughs> Let me 
Mr. Thompson. Wake up, sir. Uh, what, what happened? What you have now lost four teeth, sir. Would you like to try for eight? I demand an explanation. I do. I can't talk now. I'm a sick man. I'm very weak. By all, I'm going home. Forgive me, sir. <laughs> Up. Wake up, Mr. Boynton. Wake up. At least I got in one good look. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Miss Brooks, what happened? Don't look now, Mr. Boynton, but all you want for Christmas is your two front teeth. <laughs> Mr. Conklin was played by Gil Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Cross. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to be with us again next Sunday at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks.